in Essen and we are here in um, more ideas. More ideas both, sorry. <laughs> I'm, my Taiwanese is bad. <laughs> but I'm sitting here next uh, with Jesse Lee and David Liu. Uh, Jesse Lee is the name you haven't heard much yet, but it is the name that is slowly but steadily getting attention. Um, Jesse, how have you been doing so far? Oh, uh, Jesse is the first time to Essen, so he's very excited to meet all these gamers and all the supporters that like his game and buy amazing. his games. So it's a very amazing experience for him. Great. Can you tell us briefly about yourself? Like, who is Jesse Lee in everyday life? Oh,其实我平常工作日常是干嘛的这样子。哦，其实我平常目前的大部分时间就是放在桌游设计上。那偶尔会去那个学校兼一些课程。Okay, okay. So most of the time he's doing a designer, the designing new games. But sometimes he has a part-time job as a lecturer at schools or at some uh, shows or uh, conferences like that. So, Amazing. And how did you get into the like gaming world and game design? Oh, so he likes to play games and especially likes to play board games. So he's uh, in he's uh, into a logic log, he likes to think logically so he thinks that he can apply his skills into designing board games since he loves board games and it's and currently it seems it's quite successful yeah i agree it seems so because there are like only few games out there and all of them are recent like titles but people are already talking and you're already sold out on the the latest flow of history so, so sold out on second day which is amazing how is overly um, gaming scene in Taiwan. Okay. Can you like, if you can compare to Europe or you, you like US, that would be amazing. If not, then just overlay. Yeah, I'll just uh, okay. answer it since I'm I'm a publisher in uh, Taiwan. So uh, the board game scene in Taiwan is just growing. Uh -huh. We have a lot of new small publishers just like us that's coming around a, a couple of games, and uh, they but mostly are uh, in the Taiwan. Most players uh, play like to play like Resonance, Resonance uh -huh. Resistance, or Avalon party games, or the uh, the hidden role games. Yeah. They like this a lot. Also, Werewolf. Uh, mostly, the light party games okay. are more popular. So, the strategy game, or middle or heavyweight strategy games, are very hard to sell okay. in Taiwan. But we're slowly gaining traction. So maybe some someday we'll also sell a lot of heavy strategy games in Taiwan too. Looking forward yeah. because the, the games right now they're quite interesting. They have different twists. So yes, but is it like easier or harder to become like heard on published in Taiwan? Well, compared to maybe other, if you can compare, of course. Well, I I don't know because uh, in Taiwan there's a lot of small publishers, so everybody has, can try to publish their own game. But after coming to Essen, we see that there's also a lot of small publishers uh -huh. in different countries. So maybe it's a uh, board gaming culture is very, uh, very li lively around the world. So mm -hmm. maybe it's not very different from other places. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe indeed, yeah. Like we are from Estonia, and Estonia it's still mentality that you know board games are for kids or for nerds, not really for like adults. Yes, yes. Also, you know, Taiwan. There's a, a, a in the recent years. There's a lot of focus on using board game for education. Okay. Yes. But however, we think that board games are for gamers, and we should have like some strategic yeah. thinking inside the game. So right, maybe right. we can have a Jesse have a, his opinion on uh, education for games or board game education, something like that. Okay, sure. I think 
Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay, so okay. yeah, he, he he can since he's a lecturer at a school, uh -huh. so he can explain it better than I do. Okay. So basically, he says that uh, in Taiwan, most of the the games, not just board games or video games, the parents would think that these uh, either it's for play or maybe you have some educational value in it. If it's an educational game, they maybe they'll easier to buy want to buy this. Okay. So a lot of uh, parents. They just think that games should be a, a tool for fun or for a tool for learning. Uh, there's a lot of focus on the learning part, but uh -huh. we think that we should try to promote the board games for the fun of playing games. Yes, yeah. and especially like if you put them some strategy in it, then it you you like learn and educate while playing and having fun. So it will be much more like a natural way. Yes, yes, that's what yeah. we think too. Yeah. So, and if we speak a little bit more about your games, um, half, approximately half of your published game are card games. Um, is this your like, personal preference, or is it just easier to start with card games? Okay, 然后我想解释的是因为卡片的东西的话因为出版成本比较低比较容易说服出版社出版然后在其实旁你有说举例说唐斯片局就不是一个卡片游戏所以其实这样回答 Basically, that's because uh, it, if it's a card game, it will be easier to prototype. It's easier to also easier to push it on for publishers uh -huh. because if they're small publishers, will be, it will be cheaper for them to manufacture a pure card game. But also this year, as you can see, Ponzi scheme. It, there's yeah. a lot of comp components and big yeah. tiles in it. So we're also working on that too. So you first, have to kind of like get your way into that, and then. As you have proven, you can do like the bigger games, like a more components, a more complex. Yes, yes. Amazing. Uh, so, and again, approximately half of your published games are civilization games. To me, it sounds like a rather hard topic to start. Like, isn't that? Or am I wrong? Uh, that's because he really likes Through the Ages, and it's one of the reasons he started to design board games. Okay. Amazing! So you like, are you more into like a complex civilization games or which games do you personally like to play? On top of the head, he really likes Through the Ages and, and also uh, Power Grid. Okay, okay. So, um, Power Grid not really um, complex, but it, like math it's very deep. Ec and economical. Yes. You have quite an economical game as well, Ponzi Scheme. How did you get the idea? Because when I first heard about it, for me, the theme was so unique that I thought, okay, it's an instant buy. <laughs> Like, how did you get that idea? You think how to make this game a game that is 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 a game 这个戏剧性让我非常的着迷 okay. So he, when he was reading on the story for the Ponzi scheme the real life event of Ponzi scheme he thinks that it's a really interesting case study uh -huh. and the events that spiral uh, like a death spiral and everyone's stuck in it you cannot run away yeah. so it's a very interesting concept a very dramatic so it could be suitable to turn into a board game 我觉得这个游戏其实为什么做成游戏就是因为这个故事非常的有逻辑性那这个逻辑性可以用桌游的方式去说 uh -huh. okay. 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 So he wants to add that he thinks that if there's a logical progression of the how the event unfolds so it's, it, it's a very suitable to be a 
working fine. Okay. okay. Yeah, that um, that game was really well accepted, uh-huh. and it's picked up by, and will be published like soon in US. And people are actually really, really, really looking forward. Yes, yes. So. This is what I meant that people are like knowing, they know your name now. So it's more like just, oh, I know, I know. So that's like the first recognition. Uh, there is a thing that uh, your games, card games, have been slightly compared to Carl Chudik. Like the style. Have you played his games? Do you personally like his games? Uh, who do you mean? Carl Chudik, uh, he has done such a games like. Um, uh, innovation, innovation. Rev, uh, Red 7, Red seven. Uh, then he did uh, Glory to Rome, Ucronia. So this style is slightly similar. People have mentioned that they recognize the style. Like, was that intentional or did you just like his games or it was completely coincidence? Innovation Red 7 Glory to Rome Yeah,卡片的游戏,那是因为你是特别喜欢这种设计法呢,还是只是因为独立的设计又自然而然就很接近,或是其他原因呢? 不喜欢游戏里面有太多没有用到的配件所以只要游戏出现的配件我会尽可能想要发挥它最大的用途 because he says that he has some, he took some inspiration from him, but mainly he thinks that the similarities are because that he likes to make a, every component has multiple uses, and since his games like uh, uh, Guns and Steel and Flow of History are mostly card game, so when you put a lot of functions into a, a simple uh, on a single card, then it will look very similar to his games. Uh, right, right, I agree. Like, if you make a card game, it could be smart. Yes. Like there are lots of ways to use the card, so flip and pass and, and use the icons. Yeah, amazing. Tell us a little bit of your upcoming games. What is in the progress? What are you working on? Oh,我目前目前准备下一年要出版就是那个Monster 然后那Monster Coming它是一款就是半合作的游戏 玩家要合作去打倒怪兽那这一款是比较家庭向的游戏我之前玩过那个吗嗯之前玩过那个然后帮地产泡沫就是也是想要描写那种经济上一个灾难性的一个危机这样子对对对开发程度就比较低我就可
有他说就是只要有看到打倒怪兽的一些照片，会觉得也很有趣。Okay. 那当然，大家最期待的还是这种重经济重策略游戏，这样感觉这还是最最知名的游戏类型。<笑> okay. All right, my last question, just Essen. It's your first Essen, and it's all, I know it's only the second day. Did you have time to walk around and like check out the games? Did anything cut, like capture you? Like did it, did you like find anything anything interesting for yourself? 有没有这几天逛摊位？有没有看到什么有趣的东西，或者有没有有有趣,趣的事情发生？这样子，我还蛮喜欢。我已经买了《大西部战法》游戏，我还蛮喜欢的，《龙龙巴萨》作者的那那,那一款《大西部》的是《Great West》什么东西的，《大西部》它就了了哦，《The Great West Trail》，He already He already bought it， and、uh, 目前，目前我最，目前我就已经，我已经买了那天，就已经晚上就跟朋友一起看。Okay, so he already played it yesterday. Oh, you did.、Well. You're a lucky one then, because、yeah. this game was pretty much sold out instantly, and it's hard to find table to play. Wow, you were lucky. Amazing. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you for time okay, and you. translating. Yes. Thank you. So, thank you. looking forward to your new games, and see you. We met them next year.、Okay. I believe so. Yeah. See you soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>